Maddie and James Snow had lived in the same house in Toledo, Ohio for more than 30 years. Their neighborhood had been going downhill for some time, but with dead bolts on the doors and an aggressive watchdog in the backyard, they'd always felt safe inside their own home. The last few years I've been trying to get my mom and my dad to move out of the neighborhood. It's deteriorated. A lot of the homes are torn down. There's a lot of drug sales going on and there's a lot of mugging and things going on in that particular neighborhood. On November 9, 1989, James left for work on a night shift at a coal processing plant around 8 p.m. Until he returned about 8.30 the next morning, his 61-year-old wife Maddie would be alone in the house all night. Maddie's call for help came in at 2.42 a.m. 911, what is your emergency? Okay, where are they breaking in at? On the side, on the side. Okay, I want you to stand in line with me. I'm notifying the police now, okay? Okay, call Can you tell, what side of the house is he on? They're on the right-hand side. They're breaking out my window. They might kill me. Information about the break-in was immediately relayed to police dispatch by computer. Reporting to B&E in progress. The man is breaking out the window on the right side of the home now. Officers Nearhood and Bechtel responded. Uh, we'll head that way from Hamilton City Park. Sergeant Daniel Schultz also headed to the scene. 705 is back. I'm close. I can take that. Okay, the police, the police have been notified. They'll be there real soon. I want you to stay on the phone with me, okay? Okay, they're on the way. Okay. Well, stay, by myself. stay on the line, okay? Okay. Oh, Lord. Please call me up. Can you hear anything now? Yeah, but they're coming in. They're coming in? Oh, yeah, please tell me. Where are you at? I'm in the bedroom. Do you have upstairs and downstairs? No. Is there anything that you can push against the door in the bedroom, like a dresser or a bed? No. The There's no door? I was trying to get as much time between her and the person coming into the house as possible. I knew that the police weren't going to get there in time because it would take them at least a couple minutes. And when I realized there wasn't anything I could put between her and the perpetrator, that's when I really got scared. Can you hear him? No. We can go, we can go fast to go come in. <laughs> I was really you know, frightened for her because I wasn't sure what was happening to her. She, you know, I lost contact on the phone with her at that time, and she was basically on her own. What's going on? And she didn't tell me she had a gun, so when I heard the shots, I wasn't sure what was happening there. What's going on? I don't know if I'm going on. You can't hear him no more in the house? Well, I shot at him three times. You shot at him? I shot at him three times. I don't know what I heard him or not. The first officers arrived on the scene. And there's a lot of things that go through our minds. We don't know whether he's armed or not. We don't know whether he's high or not. We don't know whether he's going to be a fighter. If he's just going to give up. Believe me, we always like to go home at night in one piece. No scratches or scrapes. Please, please, let down the ground. Let down the ground. Oh, this son, you son. Oh, this son. 18 dispatch, man, suspect in custody. Okay, let me know where you're at, 705. 
Oh, it's taking him a long time. I knew he was going to come in. It's taking him too long to get here. Okay, the police got him. Okay. The police, the, the police are there, okay? They're in the alley. Oh, okay, okay, what I want you to do, I want you to put that gun down, okay? Put it away. Okay. Stick it in the drawer, okay? All right. And I want you to wait for the police to get there. Okay. Okay, the police are coming back there now, okay? I'll Is your it. gun put away? Yes. Okay, stay on the line with me until the police close the door, okay? Okay. I wonder who it is. I don't know. And I was real happy for her, and I felt relieved for her that everything was over that they had him and nothing more could happen to her. The suspect appeared extremely shaken and it appeared he might have been on drugs or some type of alcohol or a mixture of both. He firmly believed he was shot when I had flipped him over after handcuffing him and I think he was relieved that after I looked him over and told him he wasn't that he hadn't been shot. He probably didn't figure in his wildest dreams that he'd break into the house and get shot at. Shoot all the shots, Manny? Yes. Okay, you fired them all. Just fired them all. You know where they I know I was going to die. I know he was coming in to kill me. Because this is what's been going on, and I guess I watch his TV and read the paper and see so many people have they have found dead, and I just felt like I was he was going to kill me. How close was he when you actually fired? She didn't know the guy. The guy was uh, highly intoxicated. I'm not saying that everybody should shoot at anybody that breaks in their house, but in that situation, she definitely did fear for her safety, and she did. Uh, she did give him every opportunity to leave. After my kids all got grown and got married, my husband gave me this gun about 10 years ago. He just brought it there and said, in case you something happened, here's a gun. And it, it always stayed in that holster by the bed. Statistically, a handgun in the house is more likely to injure you or someone you know than to be used against an intruder. Maddie had been lucky. I could just hear him, like, just breaking through. And I was so frightened, I didn't know what to do. Words can't explain how frightened I was. Yeah, I knew he was a burglar, but usually, sometimes he kills, too, you know? And that's what, what came in my mind, what was going to happen to me, that he was going to kill me. Because I didn't know him, so what were we going to talk about? We didn't have anything to talk about. <laughs> I just got trigger happy. I couldn't let go. I'm glad I didn't hit him, really, because I would have had to live with it. And I'm not a violent person, and I don't believe in, you know, taking nobody's life. Well, if he had near enough to break in, he would have near enough to kill her, or beat her up, or probably hospitalize anything. So, uh... I'm just so proud she uh, was strong enough to, you know, to uh, do what she did and hold him back off of her. And really proud that didn't nobody really get hurt. The suspect is awaiting trial. Maddie wanted to express her gratitude to Michelle Mann, the 911 operator who was there when she needed help most. She was really wonderful. I think she really helped me go through what I did. She seemed like t that I know somebody was near me. She felt like she was right there, really. She's the hero of anybody else. She stood up to him and she was scared, but she stood up to him. She was really brave. 